right, you guys, we are back with Behind the Bikini. We're number episode, or number episode? Episode number. Number episode. <laughs> 27? 27, yeah. We're getting off to a good start here. <laughs> it's been one of those days, man. It's been one of those days. This um, isn't our typical day or time either, so we're no. really, really <laughs> All up. over the place, yeah. Yep. But that's because it's Arnold week, and I am leaving for the Arnold tomorrow morning. I'm doing my check-ins tomorrow with Jamie, and then I'm getting on the road, and I'm driving, so for me because it's a six hour drive um but uh, like subscribe comment before i forget do that but um yeah so I, I decided to drive just depending on on what i feel like usually i do drive to columbus because it, again six hours isn't a big deal for me if it's over six hours then we start saying yeah we're not we're not driving anymore um, <laughs> but uh but you know the, the one thing i like about driving is that i can plan my own schedule so i can do I can stay there for as long as I want. If I'm going to leave earlier, I can, you know, all those kinds of things. And then I have the ability to do whatever I need to do when I get there and all those kinds of things too. So, um, and isn't Columbus like a tough place to get around too? So like you car and yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, typically what I do, and here's the other thing, if you're ever considering going to the Arnold, they have, you know, a handful of hotels that are all connected to the convention center, right? They're more expensive, obviously, if you're going to be connected right to the convention center. But sure. it, is, it is worth it. It is worth it. Get your reservations early. There's They've got skywalks. So, like, even if it's not directly connected to the to the convention center, you can, you're can you going through the skywalks. So you don't have to go outside. And, you know, Columbus in March is a crapshoot. Sometimes it's really nice out. And sometimes, sometimes it's, it's snowing. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes it's a blizzard. Yeah, so yeah. you just don't know what you're going to run into. Um, so, but get the, get the hotels connected to the convention center because then you don't have to worry about the traffic situation. The first year that I ever went to Columbus for the Arnold was 2010. And I, I stayed at a hotel way off out in the middle of nowhere, like closer to the airport kind of thing. And they had a shuttle that went back and forth, but you're spending hours just on the shuttle getting back and forth, you know? And like no. back then they didn't have Ubers. This is back in my day. <laughs> they back in my day. Yep. They didn't have Ubers and things like that. So it was like, you know, you, you just, you had to be able to move the shuttles and, and all of that. So it was just a pain in the ass. You spend most of your day just traveling back and forth from the hotel. So um, yeah, you're going to spend a little bit more money being at the hotels downtown, but it's well worth it because you're going to spend the same amount of money on Ubers. And, and Uber. Then, yeah. And then you're going to also spend more time too. So you might yeah. as well be connected because that's one thing. And that's one of the things that I love about having the Olympia in Orlando is everything's connected in one spot. So you don't have to go anywhere other than that one spot. Yeah. We love so, it too. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the same thing with the Arnold. Everything is right there. The main hotels are all connected to the convention center, and then you've got the expo there, and you've also got the finals, and everything takes place right there. So you don't ever even have to go outside if you don't want to, you know. Love that. Love yeah, that. It's fantastic. Um, you know, and then there's the the pros gym is down the street. So if you want to go to like the main like we talked about that gym being like where everybody goes and trains, you can go walk there. It's a five, five, ten minute walk, you know, that kind of thing. So um, but if you don't want to do that, just use your hotel gym. That works too, you know. So um, I'll probably go train there once because I'm gonna structure my training since now I only have to train four days a week. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Another positive structure yeah. my training around that. So we good. Um, but yeah, so I'll be driving up there tomorrow. Um, you know, I, I, I considered going on Thursday, but I, I want to be at the meet and greet. I know if I, if I'm doing that, then I got I got a rush to drive. So what time is tomorrow. that? Out? Tomorrow at, or I'm sorry, Thursday at seven, it starts at seven, seven to nine for the meet and greet. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to what they do at the Olympia, you know, yep. that kind of thing. So, um, the Olympia is only a few hours too, right? It's only a couple of hours. <laughs> well, no, it's usually like four to six hours because they do yeah. the early access for the VIP oh. ticket holder for an hour. And then from there, the event's like three hours within itself. So, yeah. but like the, the major pros, like they'll have a line of athletes and they will be there till midnight until they see every single person in, in their line for some of them. And some of them just cut it at a certain time knowing they have to get back to their room. That yeah. is something like athletes like we've talked about is that um, for some people, they go on stage the next day, you know, yeah. like figure wellness, like they go on stage the next day. So it's, they're, they're up super, super late at the meet and greet and then getting up for hair and makeup at three, four in the morning. And I wish that they would either do it on the Sunday after a couple of days earlier. It is, it's tough, but it is such a great event for like when, when I was, you know, an, a, a watcher, I was going and meeting all my favorite yeah. friends like that so it is a great event i just wish it was structured a little bit differently well they do that at the arnold so prejudging for the arnold doesn't start until 11 yeah in the morning so 
and wellness is Friday and then um, bikini is Saturday. Yep. So as far as the female divisions that I'll be covering and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, it, and they don't do as long of a, of a meet and greet, I think because they don't have as many athletes since it's an invite ah, only. Got it. You know, you've got, you got 10, 12 athletes in a, in a class versus 50. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, that also makes a difference in, in how they structure prejudging too, because prejudging for the Arnold doesn't last that long because you've got, you know, 12 athletes in a class, you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's nice. it's not long. Yeah. And so the live little, stream is free this year, it, guys. You just go on the Arnold's website. There's a little live stream or PPV at the top and you get to put in your email and then it sends you instructions on how to watch it. So that's a really cool yeah. perk. You don't have to pay for it this it, year. It used to be like that too. Like back in the day, again, back in my day when I first started, <laughs> like and all that's that's how I first got into it because I was watching the pay-per-views specifically for the Arnold. Yeah. Because I mean that's it was free. It was on buybuilding.com, yeah. you know what I mean? And it was cool. Like so I, I wish they would do more stuff like that just because I think it opens it up to a new audience, you know? Yeah, of course. So of course. Um, what I'll be doing there is I am, I am on media for that, for this year again, Woohoo! yay. <laughs> but I'll be doing my commentary just like I did last year. So um, I was just talking about this before we went on live here because I was going to try and do it live through my, this, this app right here that I typically do all my lives with. But the problem with that is that, if I don't have good Wi-Fi, it's not going to connect well, and I just don't want it to be completely screwed up. So I'm just going to do it through Spotify, like I like I usually do through Podcasters. So then that way we'll be sure to have it. I was kind of hoping, you know, and, and again when I get there, and maybe if the Wi-Fi signal is good or whatever, then maybe I'll change my mind. But I don't think so because I just don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk going through the whole thing and then have nothing recorded. That's happened <laughs> so, to you once, and it only takes it once, right? It did. And I'm just like, no, this is not cool. So you yeah. know, we'll. You know, I, I want to do something where, you know, I had zero issues with it at the Arnold last year. So um, I don't think I'll have issues with it this year either. You know, the big issue with it last year or this, the Olympia was that it was, there was zero sing, signal in that, in that expo hall. There was none. I know. Sucked. You know, we were I, Asian. None of us had <laughs> signal. It was like, what's going on? No. How much time do we have? Jamie, are we like, nobody could get in, in touch with anybody. I sent a text to somebody at the beginning of prejudging of, of bikini and they didn't get it until I was taking pictures with Yulia over after the day. At the, over at the end of finals. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I sent that like two hours ago. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's way over now. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, we're good. Like whatever I said, it was way over. <laughs> yeah. So that's not the scenario when we go to Ohio. So we'll be a little bit better off over there. So I'm curious to see how, the expo lines up this year and everything too. Cause really like the last year is the first time that all these ex expos have really been coming back full force since yeah. the whole, the whole COVID shut COVID, you know? So yeah. I'm curious to see if it's bigger this year. It was decent size last year. It wasn't nearly what it used to be, but I don't think, I don't think expos ever will be what they used to be. You know what I mean? Just in general. So I'm curious to see if it's bigger or if it's the same or, you know, the number of people that actually show up as spectators and things like that, if that's going to be different. Um, it's always interesting to see. I like to see those kinds of trends and I'm a numbers person and stuff like that too. So I like to see how that, how that's going to play out. So expos keep getting better and better. I mean, the one at the Olympia yeah. this past year was great. And then legions had in a, in a, um, an expo type setting and they had a lot of great companies out there and people were giving things away again yeah. and yeah. companies are starting to kind of recoup if you will, or they're, they are recouped from all the money they lost from COVID and things like that. And then we're not as worried about you know touching things so hopefully it will be a little bit better because i have seen smaller shows which aren't small shows at all but smaller shows to compare to the arnold that are getting some good turnout so we'll see hopefully. well i think also one of the things that's that's helping with these events and things like that is everything is cyclical everything always comes back around like Expos were huge, and then they started dropping off because everybody started spending more money in internet internet advertising and marketing and things like that. And you know, Facebook and Instagram, blah, 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 all that stuff, all, the, all that kind of marketing, spending money there because you really can quantify it. Well, it's becoming harder and harder to make money on those platforms. Harder and harder to make money on those platforms. If if you run any kind of ads or anything like that on those platforms, it's really hard to get and nail into your demographic. So I think people are going back to old school where they're like, we got to have face-to-face -to -face face -to -face. Touching, touching kind of contact, you know, it's just, you can't do everything virtually. It just doesn't work. Um, you know, and I don't know if you have ever, have ever tried to run campaigns or anything like that for ads on, on these platforms, but it is a pain in the ass trying to get to your, to your demographic. It's really, really hard. So yeah. 
you know, it's, I, I think that we're going to start seeing over the next couple of years, you know, we're going to start seeing kind of this, the shift back to like almost old school type stuff. You know what I mean? It's just, it, there, nothing takes the place of face-to-face contact. It just doesn't. No. We're know? still human and human nature is relationships, right? And connection. Yeah. And, you know, yep. the, the companies that I work with are the ones that I feel like I have a connection with. I always save sponsorships and things like that with the people that I feel like I can pick up the phone and call tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yeah. So I, 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 I've done a couple of Google ads for my gym out in Tampa push and um, we we're seeing good success with it, but it's different. Like for you, yeah. you're selling like a good, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a suit, like this is something people mm-hmm. want to feel and touch and try on, you know, mm-hmm. it's not something really, you know, put a cool video up and someone's like, oh, I want to buy this thousand dollar suit. You know, it's just, it's, yeah. it's so different, but it is, it's interesting to see the marketing trends and things like that as, as a business owner, because you have to be willing to pivot. It, it keeps yep. changing, it's ever changing. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And that's the biggest thing. Like, you know, we talked about that before, just being willing to be open to learning new things and trying new things. And yeah, it may, it may fail at first, but you know, you got to keep going and just pick it up and try it again, yep. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, that's, and that's what this, I mean, really, that's what this sport is all about too. We talked about it last week. Like we don't like when people speak in absolutes and stuff like that, because things change all the time and what works right now may not work next time, you know? So you've got to be willing to, and be open to trying new things and changing things and all those kinds of things. So, which yeah. brings us to our topic for today. <laughs> Look at that little segue. <laughs> right. Which is what you should be looking for in a coach and really what defines um, a prep coach, that kind of thing too. So this was, this was actually a question that was brought to us, but it was something we actually talked about putting into um, a topic. So it worked out pretty well. It's on people's minds right now. You know what I mean? So, um, We kind of wanted to go into this a little bit, too, and talk a little bit about what you spoke about at CCTS this past year. So we thought this would give you a little bit of a a taste of kind of the content that we go through and things like that as well. So um, doing your little segment of, of this, but we just want to kind of go into, you know, what we were just talking about, really, the relationships and things like that when it comes to having a good coaching relationship and what you should be looking for and what you should be avoiding, too. Um, and when is a good time to bring on a coach? What is a good time to move on to somebody else? All those kinds of things. So um, we can start just by pulling, bringing up your, your screen share or slideshow and we'll take it from there and build upon that. So let me get that up. There we go. So we got the coach athlete relationship and um, how to get the most out of your coaching and what are the expectations. So go ahead and, and kind of expand on this. Or do you want me to go to the next slide for you? Next slide. Okay. Next slide. Next slide. So <laughs> this, this, this was a, an encompassing um, presentation that FitBody did at, at Sean's event, CCTS, Cuties Conquering the Stage. This literally were the slides, my slides. You, you're not seeing all of them that uh, we presented. And part of my speech was talking about, obviously, what's the expectations as a coach? What are expectations of an athlete? And just like Sean said, what are red flags? What are green flags? What are signs of, you know, how to move on? Or, you know, some things that that, that girls were literally coming up to us at CCTS and saying like, hey, I'm looking for a coach. What should I do? Or, hey, I'm considering leaving a coach. What should I do? Um, so the first thing I did was I put together what I thought are realistic expectations from your coach. So remember, you know, at the end of the day, Sean and I are both coaches, but we're also athletes as well. So we see this from some different lenses here. Um, so number one to me is always communication. Mm-hmm. Um, and we could take this for a couple a couple different ways, you know, as far as what to expect from your coach in regards to communication. The first one that comes to me is, is pro- proper response times and which is, actually second on here um Mm -hmm. i have girls ask me all the time like how long does it take for you to answer a check-in and i always answer my check-ins same day i mean i you know if i'm behind on my day for an emergency or travel or for whatever reason i'm staying up till midnight to get get my check-ins done before Mm -hmm. i lay my head it's just the way that i operate it's just the way that i work um also communicating to me is someone that can communicate what the why why is something in your plan why am i changing this this week um you know to to me i'm the type of athlete where if jamie makes a a change in my plan i like to ask the why and the deeper understanding behind it if i don't know it already and if i understand the why then i'm going to be more inclined to continue to follow that and to continue to make it an effort in my plan Mm -hmm. um 
So communication is, is always number one. And, and, you know, the coach has to be honest and transparent, but you also have to be honest and transparent to the coach, coach right, right. back as well. Yeah. And I think that that's a big thing too, because I see that happen a lot where clients don't want to bother a coach with, you know, stupid questions or whatever it may be. I don't want to, I didn't want to dive into this. I had this happen. I just did a check-in t- today. It was the continuing from yesterday because she, she was late on her check-in and she didn't want to check in with me because she didn't feel good about her check-in. And, you know, at the end of the day, she told me everything and she told me why she didn't feel good about her check-in and all this kind of stuff. And I said, see, these are the things that when you tell me, it helps me as a coach address what I have to do for you. Right. If you don't tell me and I just get nothing, I'm like, I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on. All I know is that you didn't check in and I don't know if it was because you just didn't feel like it that day or, you know, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. But when you sit down and you tell me what what, what went on, it's like, oh, great. Then I, I can adjust with that. I can take that information. I can do something with that. Yeah, yeah. maybe it wasn't the best check in in the world. That's OK. At least I know why. So it's yes. the same, same thing behind, you know, you as a client want to know the why. Me as a coach, I want to know the why, too, because I can't do my job if I don't. Yep. You know, I can't do things for you if I don't know what's going on. And, you know, after she told me everything, she felt a lot better about telling me, I said, listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to help you. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're paying me to do this for you. Like, I can't do it for you if you don't tell me. So just tell me. It's cool. That's what I'm here for. That's exactly what I'm here for. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, so, and that's a really you, great point. Yeah. It needs to go both ways. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like on the harder weeks too is even more of a reason why you should be checking in, you know, and mm-hmm. I know girls get their check-ins all the time. They don't want to get in the suit. They don't want to, you know, especially, you know, competitive athletes they are in an off season and things mm-hmm. like that. But those things for showing up and checking in with yourself and your coach is even more imperative. Um, I just had a girl mm-hmm. check in yesterday. Her weight shot up six pounds in a week, you know, she's like, I hate my body. I hate the way I look. And I knew right away I could look, I, I know her so well. I looked at her, there was, you know, film of water and just her language in her check-in to me was hormonal. Mm-hmm. We get on a call, yeah. we talk it out, you know, she's, she's saying all these things. And I was like, this is, this is hormones. This is for sure yeah. hormones. And then she, mm-hmm. she her period. So yeah, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the, the times you don't want to check in and you're feeling that down and low on yourself. Well, by the time we got off that call, she literally said, thank you so much for calling me and taking 30 minutes. I feel so much better now. Yeah, that's a yeah. that's the coach, right? Like I mm-hmm. can tell from her language and the tone of her check in that something was off. We got on a 10, 15 minute call. We ended up talking for 30 minutes, just, you know, catching up and things like that. And we left the call and she's so, she's in so, so much of a better headspace and she's going to have yeah. so much of a better week just from taking 15 to 20 minutes on a call with somebody. So, right. you know, but if I didn't know her, you know, mm-hmm. and did took the time to get to know her each week, I probably would have missed that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and that's, and that comes from you, you know, reaching out and saying, Hey, listen, let's get on a call too. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's, again, it needs to go both ways. So if your coach is not picking up on those cues, maybe they're not really paying attention. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So those are, those are things that your coach should be paying attention to as well. If they're just giving you generic, like, okay, cool, let's, let's go. You know, <laughs> like you're right. I, I don't know if men are like this, but females, at least from my experience, were a little bit more intuitive. And we can tell, like you said, just from the language of how they check in, that something's off. Absolutely. That something's wrong. Absolutely. You, you know, know, the greatest thing about being a woman and the downfalls, we're emotional beings, <laughs> right? Yeah. So for most yeah. of us, we can be emotional, we can, you know, overthink and but we communicate, you know, and so mm-hmm. we're able to kind of see those fluctuations, the more that we get to know someone. Yep. So when, and when you say proper response times, 24 hours to respond to check-ins and questions, Um, I would also say as far as from the client vantage point, the client needs to be on time with their responses too. Absolutely. So, um, one of the things that I tell people, and this is, this is a question that I get a lot as far as response times are concerned. I think a lot of us do this this dissimilarly where I want your check-ins before noon that day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously it's going to, everybody's going to be in a different time zone. So I, you know, it's it's noon their time frame because then that gives me the opportunity, no matter where they are to be able to schedule it into my day so I can get their check-in done. That's it. That's it. So if it comes, if it comes in afternoon, um, they, you know, they know ahead of time, that's the, that's the cutoff. I'm not going to leave them hanging. But they know at that point, 
sorry, that was a that was a notification on my end. They know they know at that point that it's probably going to be a little bit more delayed on my end because I've got other people that that held up their end of the deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? They held up when they were supposed to check in. So I'm going to get to you, but it might not be until later that night or maybe the next morning, depending on, again, time zones and things like that. You know, there is a certain time where I'm like, I shut my computer down. If it's after eight o'clock at night, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be responding to you anymore. That's, that's my, that's my family time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So and you're nicer um, than me. I, you know, I, <laughs> my, my girls know they have their day. They have their time. If it's late, you do not get a response for the week. If it if really it, wow, I'm, you're you're tough. I'm tough. Yeah, because why? Damn, because they always hear from me the same day. Because on check-in yeah. days, I wake sure I yeah. get up at five forty-five, six o'clock. I get my cardio in and I start my check-ins so that they all hear from me in an appropriate amount of time. So if I'm going to yeah. show up as the coach and make sure that you can hear back from me in an appropriate amount of time, the one thing you have to do as an athlete is check in on time. And I also yeah. give them the option that yeah. they could check in the day before. I always say, hey, your you know, check-ins due Monday by 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wake up Sunday. Take your fast and yeah. take your photos Sunday night yeah. sitting around the house. Throw everything together and send it to me so it's in my inbox by Monday morning. And yeah. it, it also establishes a level of respect in that boundary. Yeah. So they know. I would agree with if that. They're, if they're checking in late, they're not going to get – it's just, hey, thank you for at least sending in a check-in. Keep following the same thing for the week. Um, yeah. I do. I, I hold my team to a very high standard. To me, if you're an athlete, and obviously most of the girls on my schedule are trying to turn pro, well, the one thing yep. you can do is turn your check-in in on time. That is what a pro is. That's true. Do. That's true. That's very true. Um, and I guess I am a little bit more lenient. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't realize I'm, I'm lenient, but I guess I am a little bit more lenient. Um, because even with the, the posing, like I do the same thing because I have posing clients that check in online and I have three days a week where I have posing check-ins, right? I have Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if they come in on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, my freaking, sorry, my calendar keeps, keep, I'm trying to get rid of all of the notifications that keep popping up. So it's loud. Sorry. I can't hear anything. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> you can't hear it? No, oh, I can. No. So maybe it's, maybe it's not, a, if I can hear it on my end, so I'm like, oh, that's really loud. It's like, little, it's like little, I'm trying to close off all my calendar notifications and they're just, they're just pinging. They're all dinging. So. <laughs> I know, right? So anyway, speaking of calendars, um, so I have my, my, my posing check-in days and they're Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if you get me your check-ins on Monday, Wednesday, Friday when you're posing, you're getting a, a, a response that day. If you don't, you're waiting till the next day. So if you, you know, if it's supposed to be on Monday and I, and you don't turn it in until Tuesday, you're not getting a response until I recheck all those posing things on, on Wednesday. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's where I, I do um, set my boundaries this, for that as well. Um, you know, maybe I'll get tougher as we go along, but I, I, I'm, not, I'm also, uh, I, this is actually something that I'm working on. I'm a hyper responder. So as soon as I get a notification, boom, I respond right away. So <clears throat> I'm like that with everything. Yeah. Text messages, emails, everything. I'm that way with everything. Yeah. And so if I haven't unanswered something, it actually bothers me if I don't un if I don't answer it. So <laughs> I'm the same. like that's partly my fault. No. But that's what makes you also great as a coach, right? Because you're never gonna yeah. get the complaint from a client that they didn't hear back from you. Right. And yeah, yeah, yeah. to me, like that's just so simple. You know, it's like that's our yeah. job. It's respond mm -hmm. back. So yep. anyway, <laughs> I could go on a tangent about that, but <laughs> Just turn in your check in on gotten, time. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've gotten a lot better about about being a hyper responder. I will say that because it used to be like immediate. Now at least I sit back and like I said, I, I have my 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 family hours and my office hours. And if it comes in during family time, I'm not answering it. Yeah, it just is what it is. Yeah, you got it. So like we're, you know, we're just, human too. <laughs> mm -hmm, we have families mm -hmm. too. You know, like I need to turn off my computer just like I would in an office. 6 6 30 like yep. i try mondays right now i'm working till like 8 30 9 o'clock at night mm -hmm. it's my one day though yep. that i have to work that late most of the time but we're human too you know we have boundaries yeah. we have families we have things that we like to do we have errands like we have normal responsibilities yep. so that's why my schedule is like especially in yep. prep you know, yeah. like that's well, my, and my husband says it all the time. He's like, your, your emergency is not my problem. Right. That's his, that's his famous line. I'm like, True. yeah, it's, it sounds like being my problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, but yeah, I get it. No, I get it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I, and he even says, he tells me all the time, he's like, you're too nice to people sometimes. I'm like, ah. Oh my God, Usually what our greatest attribute is, is also our kryptonite. So, you know, that's right. hundred percent. It absolutely is. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely very aware of that. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, so that, that's the, the response times thing. Any, anything else that you would say on the response time aspect of it? No. Okay. No. 
let's move on to the next point then. Respectful and ethical. Respectful, ethical, and I'll I'll just sum it up by safe plans, right? So, you know, on, obviously if your coach is delivering an idea to you or something that, you know, they want you to be doing or put into your body and you don't feel comfortable with that, speak up, right? Like yep. at the end of the day, I always say like the coach is going to try to guide you, but you are 100% ultimately, ultimately responsible and in charge of anything that you do or put into your body. Um, 100%. But the coach has to be, you know, knowledgeable, educational, mm -hmm. They should have a reason for things. They should be telling you how things work and how mechanisms work. And if they don't, I would say that's a red flag, right? If they're yep. asking you for mm -hmm. something that doesn't seem right, I am still bothered by the amount of things that I hear about coaches asking for nude photographs in, in check-in photos that, yeah. or, you know, mm -hmm. certain positions. And just if it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. So yes. that's, that would definitely be a red flag. Um, I mean, there's plenty of girls that post their check-in photos, Sean and myself being one of them. Mm -hmm. That's an expectation yeah. of what, what it looks like to be checking with a coach. Anything right. other than that is, is not needed. Um, that's right. Yeah. And if, if that, let's just put that out here right now. You never have to send in nude photos for any reason whatsoever. Never. I've heard the stupidest reasons why coaches ask for nude photographs and it just freaking blows my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like never. No, don't never. ever have to do that. Never. No. So you know, like you're not doubt, stepping up, you're not stepping on stage nude. So why would you need nude photographs? Like why? Yeah. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's it's taking advantage. And yeah. if you're a first time competitor listening to this podcast, I hope you're listening. That is never acceptable and it's never Absolutely. warranted. There's there's never a reason for it. And mm -hmm. so that's just the simple thing. If it if you're doubting it, if you're not sure about it, don't and ask. Go find yeah. another resource to ask. Yep. Um, if it seems fishy, it's it's probably off. It's, yep. It probably is. You know, trust mm -hmm. your instinct there. But I one I think one metric would be if you're sending something to your coach that your significant other would have a problem with you sending it to them, you're, mm -hmm. you probably shouldn't be doing that. And that, that goes Great. for not just, not just nude photographs. It goes for how you're posing and it goes for yes. what you're posing in and all those kinds of things too. Yes. If you think that your significant other would not be okay with seeing that, you probably shouldn't be sending it to your coach. Yes. That's a, that's, that's a great point. If you can't send it to mom and dad, probably not. Yeah. Not not right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, mom and dad's a little touchy too, because some, some dads don't want to see their daughters and thongs, you know? So yeah, that's true. My dad went, my dad went to one show, my very first show ever. He's like, oh, I'm good. I, 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 you, I birthed you. Like, I don't need to see that. Just like, let me know how you do with the Olympia. Like, I, yeah, I just had this conversation in a Facebook group. I mean, my, my parents are very conservative, but they're not when it comes to like the human body and things like that. So like, they've been to my shows, they've been to all my, like my modeling stuff, they've been to all that stuff. So it's not a big deal, but for a lot of parents, it is for a lot of parents. It's, it's weird for them. And it, that's, that's fine. That's their, that's their perspective. You know what Absolutely. I mean? So yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the next one, this is a big one, I think. I mean, is the plan working? Yeah. You know, you've been working with a coach for, let's say, probably about six months. And if your goal is to be growing and you're not, what's what's going on? You mm -hmm. know, like, is the plan that your coach is giving you working? This could be a personal thing, too. You know, yep. like, I have a bunch of girls on my on my schedule right now where I've given them a a specific um, training block or something like that. And I'm not really seeing the growth that I need. I send them to go find a local trainer. They work with a local trainer for one to two sessions or some stick with their trainer. Now they're exponentially growing mm -hmm. on the same plan that they were working on for four months. Mm -hmm. So this could be two sides here. So you also have to kind of, again, look at yourself. Is there anything I'm leaving on the table or is the, is the plan not working for you, yes. you know? Um, and I have girls that come to me and they're like, Hey, I just don't feel like this block is really doing anything for me. Can we switch it up? And then we switch it up and something else works for them. Mm -hmm. But that that's me being, being, I want to say me being coachable, right. Or hearing, yeah. listen, that's the next point of hearing my clients say, I'm not really feeling this. I'm not really getting any thing out of it. Can we change it? I listen, we take notes, we make some changes and then they grow. Yep. Um, but you shouldn't be spinning your wheels for six months. If you are in a growing phase with a coach and six months from now, your check-in photos look the same yes. and the coach has not approached you and said, Hey, I'm not really seeing what I need to see. Let's go over all these variables and do this checklist. Okay. Uh, we're missing something here or everything looks good. Let's change this. 
if that's not that conversation's not being had and you're noticing there's no changes, it, it might be time to look into some things, whether yeah. that's talking to the coach about what you're seeing, sending them your side by sides or looking for another option, but the plan should be working. Right. And then that goes back to if the coach isn't saying something, if they aren't saying like, like if you're looking at your photos and you can see that nothing's happening, right. Your coach should be seeing that nothing's happening too. Right. And if they're not, then you have to ask yourself, is your coach actually engaged or paying attention, is, paying attention? or do they know what they're looking at? You know, a yeah. lot of times, a lot of, we talk about this in bodybuilding a lot. People don't have the eye. They don't know what they're looking yeah. at. They, they, they say that they can coach somebody, but they don't actually go to shows and see what the results are and things like that. So they don't know what they're looking for. You know, just because you can train somebody in the gym and put them through a workout doesn't mean you can prep them for a bodybuilding show. They're two yeah. different, they're two different things. So while that coach may be very, very skilled at what they do, if they don't have an eye and they don't know what they're looking for, yeah. what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, what are you doing? You know, yeah. so you got to make those, those, those kind of distinctions too. So as an athlete, you got to take some responsibility in that too and say, listen, I need to educate myself too. So I know what I'm looking at mm -hmm. and, and know if what I'm looking at is good or not. You know what I mean? Like you, you've got to, you got to understand that for yourself too. Right. Yeah. And I think so. a lot of this is ego driven on both sides, right? Like the yeah. coach doesn't want to save the client. Hey, my plan is not working for you. What's right. going on? Right. Because mm -hmm. that's an ego statement. Mm -hmm. And then the client also doesn't want to admit like, hey, I might be leaving something on the table or, hey, right. I don't feel like I know how to train or do this movement. And there's so many different facets to training that are missed because, because unfortunately we are on an online platform. Mm -hmm. I have a client that has been training for years. She's so close to a pro card, so, so close to, to a pro card, but I know she knows how to train, but her glutes aren't growing. So finally mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, I need you to go find a trainer. I need you to go get, do an assessment. Like we need to figure yeah. out what's going on. Come to find out she's got all this, this tightness and her, her obliques are completely, uh, she has no strength in her obliques. So there were all these things that were limiting her mm -hmm. from growing her glutes that had nothing to do with her training, her training form or anything like that. It was tightness and weaknesses in other areas of the body that weren't allowing her, her glutes to really get that mind to muscle activation. Yeah. Now she She's gotten this assessment. She's doing all of her exercise. She just checked in this week and she says that this is the most she's ever felt her glutes. So nice. again, it's not necessarily just like my program sucks or her training form sucked. It was something completely entirely different. But if I wasn't looking at her photos each week and seeing that something was off and putting my ego aside and saying, hey, it's either me, it's you. I don't know what it is, but we need to just start with the basics and get it looked yeah. at. You know, she would have yep. just been spinning her wheels for another six months. So Yep. It could be ego driven as well, but the plan should be working or if it's not working, there should be communication on, Hey, in a very nice way from the coach, this is what I'm seeing. I'm not really seeing as much as I would like to at this point. Let's talk about it. And what can we do to move forward? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, going back to communication yep. yeah. and mm -hmm. listening. That's the next point, right? Yep. Like it still blows my mind too. When I hear girls that come over on our team and they're like, Oh, like you want me to actually write out a sentence in my sentence? <laughs> I know. <laughs> my coach told me that I'm only able to write one word or like nine out of ten. And I'm like, no, no like that I doesn't help me. For me yeah. to better, you know, like, and then the coach, like, they should be listening to you. So, like, whatever yes. you put in that check-in, I always try to respond back to my girls acknowledging you yes. know, what they said. So they know that I'm listening, they know I'm paying attention. I'm re- rephrasing to them almost like what their goals are for this week so that I, they know that I'm on the same page with them. And if they tell mm -hmm. me something's not working, I either listen to them and change it or I'm like, mm, I think that maybe we just need to do a little bit of this or a little bit yes. of that and we work on correcting it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Little and, <clears throat> and doing little wins, like you said, I mean, you can listen when you listen to somebody like that, it's, it's easy to find places where you can tweak and give them a little win, a little win that gets them a little bit more progress if you're paying yeah. attention. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times I think as competitors, we get stuck on this goal of getting on stage and we miss all of those things that happen in between, right? So if you listen to what a, what a client is going through, then you can find ways to give them little wins every week, little things to be building on every week. So that, that way they feel like they're progressing, even when we know that stage goal is so far away. But again, it takes you sitting there and listening to what they're saying to you 
and how they're feeling throughout the week in order to do that kind of thing. So, you know, that to me is a mark of somebody that's, that's, that actually wants to see you progress because they want you to stick to it. You know, they want, yeah. to, they want to see you progress through your program. But the only way that you can do that is, is again, by giving you little, little things to be happy about every single, every single time you check in. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, the last thing I wrote here is, um, this is what Drew always says, my husband, um, this is in light of let everybody's a coach these days, right? Yeah. Somebody goes, yeah. gets, gets coached themselves one time and then all of a sudden they're a coach. But what they're doing is just what they've learned from their coaching experience that one time, not actually mm-hmm. their education and whatnot. So if you really think about this statement to me and Drew, this is like our, our foundation is that a great coach is a innovator, not a replicator. So it's somebody that is present, a coach is somebody that's, you know, an athlete presents them with a problem and they could think of multiple ways to try to fix this problem. And not to say that every problem has multiple solutions, but we're dealing with the human body here. And we've talked about this all the time. There's book work and then there's actual just real life and like Mm -hmm. what actually happens in this, in the sport day to day. And everybody is so unique and so different, you know, the way that I prep is not the way that Sean would respond to prep That's great. and vice, vice versa. And something that, you know, Jamie tries with Sean could work really great for her for let's say fat loss. And mm-hmm. then Jamie could try the same thing with me and nothing happens. Yep. And so if that one coach with that one experience that's replicating their own plan, they're not going to be able to help that athlete that presents with some sort of issue or troubleshooting because they just don't have the experience. So, mm-hmm. you know, someone that, you have seen, okay, this is an issue. Let's pivot. Let's try this. Okay. That doesn't work either. Let's try this. And it's okay to try multiple things and then not work, but the coach should be able to give those multiple options. Yes. Yeah. There's a saying also that's along with that long, that line too called plagiarize and improve. So there's a difference between just plagiarizing something and just copying it over and over and over again and taking knowledge and improving upon it. You know, I like that. I like that. Know, plagiarize and improve. Like you want yeah. to take what you've, your experience has given you, but you've got to improve upon that and make it better and have that student mentality. That's one of the things that actually I love about now working with Fit Body Fusion is whenever we do these coaching calls and things like that, it's not just us on the calls, but Jamie and Greg are on the calls too. Everybody's on the calls learning from each other. There's always yeah. opportunities to learn. There's always opportunities to do something a little bit better, a little bit different. Try this stimulus, try that one, you know, and just and figure out a better way. There's, there's, we were just talking about this before we got on this live, how, how people get so stuck in old ways and they don't want to even try to do something new when it, all they have to do is tweak one little thing and that could make all the difference in the world. That could yeah. make all the difference in the world, just improving just a little bit. Yeah. You know, and I, I said that to myself, I said this last night when I was sitting there going through my, my progress videos and stuff, I was like, damn it, I wish I'd figured this shit out 10 years ago when I was in my 30s, you Yeah, know? me too. <laughs> I was like, man, I was like, could you imagine where I'd be right now if I had done all this 10 years ago? Like, Absolutely. You know, oh. and a lot of bodybuilding too is, it is recycled material, yeah. right? It's recycled mm-hmm. material and recycled thought processes with learning as people go and becoming mm-hmm. better and better with that same material. And I agree with you. You know, there's there's days where Jamie's calling me and I think she's calling to talk about me or my plan. And she's like, hey, I want to run something by you. Like, what do you think of this? And I'm like, you know, and it's it's true. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Not, you know, we... It, it's just so beautiful, like our team mm-hmm. and like the collaboration we have, because we all just present with completely different backgrounds and experiences, and we're all learning from each other so that we all service our clients. Yeah. I don't know your athletes, and I, right. I don't see them personally, but you've probably learned something from me that you're going to share with them. And yep. same thing, you don't yep. know any of my athletes, but I've learned so much from you with posing. I use your tips and tricks all the time, yep. and Absolutely. now that athlete is better for it. That's right. Absolutely. And that's, you know, that's, that's, again, that's the cool part about it. It's like, at the end of the day, the people that are benefiting from it are the athletes that we work with. You know yeah. what I mean? They're the ones that are getting the, the, the juju from it, which is great. Yeah. That means everybody, when, when everybody's, everybody comes up, the whole ship rises together, you know? Absolutely. So it, that's, that's fantastic. Yay. Yes. Awesome. It's like woohoo moment. <laughs> do you want me to go to the next slide for you? <laughs> go, go uh, two over. Two this yeah. one or next one? next one this one yeah okay so i think this you know like at ccts what a lot of people were saying is i'm either shopping for a coach <laughs> or i'm currently with a coach but i'm thinking about changing and it's really mm-hmm. interesting i was actually uh 
Jamie had a client fly into town yesterday for an in-person assessment with Drew. We're all sitting around the table last night. We're all talking about this, about coaching athletes, coaches mm-hmm. that are backstage trying to poach athletes. And what the what this couple said is that they said, in their opinion, that if an athlete is truly secure with their coach they and they're so poached. happy, they, they can't be poached. Okay. They're, 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 their head is not going to be on a swivel. Like, that's nope. how I feel about Jamie. Like, any coach who come up and talk to me, like, I'll listen to you, but, like, I'm not looking. You know, I'm not That's right. And the way that they related it was a relationship. That's right. And Amir, you know, he's he was saying about her, the athlete, he's like, I know she, her and I are good. Like, yep. I treat her with love and respect. I know that she's not going anywhere. So any guy could go up and talk to her at the gym. I'm not, no, she's not going. Absolutely. Anywhere. Yep. And I was like, that's really interesting, right? So if, like, you already know that you're, with a coach and you're open to hearing or seeing different possibilities, you're already gone. You're, you're right. already looking in a different, and now you have to ask yourself why. Mm-hmm. And the same goes for the person that's looking for a coach for the first time. I think it starts with looking internally at yourself mm-hmm. and what you need, because yes. again, we're all so different. Mm-hmm. Some athletes need that hard ass, right? They need that person that's going to kind of be like, you know, this is what we need to do this week. I'm slashing your macros. Go execute. Some yep. people need the, hey, beautiful, how are you? You look fantastic. Hey, you did really great this week, but we need to do it. They need that, like, that compliment sandwich, right? So mm-hmm. there's different coaches for everybody. So it's what kind of identifies with you and your values. And if you're currently with working with a coach, go back to a simple pros and cons list. Yes. What you liked, what you didn't like. And then you have that in front of you so that when you're looking at coaches to start setting up interviews with, you might know, not know their personality at the time, but ask that coach point blank on that call. What's your coaching style? What do you like for check-ins? What's your check-in process like? Do you like one word answers? Do you like, what, what, what data do you ask for? And that's mm-hmm. really going to give you a feel of the mm-hmm. relationship and what you're going to be getting out of that experience. Yep. And then always going back to what we said before, are you getting results? Right? Because A lot of times it's that grass is always greener kind of mentality. You know, you see other athletes succeeding with a specific coach or whatever it might be. And you think, well, maybe if I was with that coach, I'd be doing the same thing. But then you look at the results that you currently have with your coach. Are those good results? Are you getting good results? Are you doing what you paid your coach to do? Like, is that happening? If it is, you might be better off just staying where you are. Yeah. Right? Like you might be better off. If you're not, if you're not seeing those things, if you're not seeing those results, You know, maybe it's time to start looking a little bit. And again, just like what you said, an athlete cannot be poached if they are not poachable. You know, it's this, it's just not a thing. Like you're, you're, it's just like the same thing as, as we're talking about relationships and stuff like that too. You know, if you're going on, on social media and you're dropping into the DMs and all that kind of stuff, you're already looking, you're already gone. You're already out the the door. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, not something that a coach can control. You control that as the athlete, you control if you're going to stay where you are, if you're going to go someplace else. And, you know, going back to what you said with the pros and cons list and at the end of the day, sitting down and saying, am I getting what I'm paying for? Am I getting what I wanted out of this? Is this actually the, the, the case? Because a lot of times it is the shiny object syndrome and you're just like, well, that person has all these amazing athletes. I want to be an amazing athlete. I need that coach. That's not necessarily how that works. It's not yeah. necessarily how that works because you may not fit with that coach very well. You know, that those, those methods and principles and things like that, that that particular coach uses may not work for you. Yeah. Right. So you have to always think those pros and cons and, you know, sometimes you don't know it until you experience it either. It's just like dating, you know, you got to get yeah. out there and you got to date, you got to date a bunch of frogs before you find Prince Charming. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I feel that way with my coaching experience and, and the people that I've gone and, 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 been, and been with. If I hadn't been underneath those coaches, I wouldn't appreciate what I have now with Jamie. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I go, I, again, I go back to, I wish I'd learned all this stuff 10 years ago, but at the same time, if I hadn't kissed all those frogs, I might not have realized what I got right here. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I might not have realized how good this is. So, you know, there's, there's pluses and minuses and nobody can figure that out. But you, sometimes you got to go kiss a few frogs. You yeah. know, sometimes you got to go kiss a few frogs. That's okay. We all got to do yeah. it. Every one of us have to do it. I had to do it yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, and I love what you said too about, about value, you know? Yeah. I have a, you know, you get what you pay for. Yes. And I'm not saying that you have to be paying $500 a month for a coach. That's not what I'm saying. What mm-hmm. I'm saying is 
is, is that some coaches right now are coaching for free. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's really enticing to an athlete, right? It's like, Oh, you know, this coach said that they think I have a lot of potential. And because of that, they're going to, you know, coach me for free. And then you start to get on their book and you start to see maybe why they're not responding to you, you know, or it's taking them three to four days to respond to you. You know, you ask a question, your check-in's on a Tuesday, you're asking a question on the Friday and they're like, Hey, you can't talk to me outside of your check-in day. Yeah. Um, they don't really feel like they're getting that inclusive experience. So I'm going to say, you know, it's very simple. You get what you pay for, right? Like yep. I'm not motivated. I'm sorry. I, I love all my athletes. Of course I would do this for free if I could, but I'm not motivated to get out of bed and answer 30 check-ins if I'm not getting paid for it. Like, right. hundred percent. I put a lot into my time and mm-hmm. into athletes. I mean, it's so funny. Yesterday, I literally worked from 6.30 to 6.30 at night. No breaks. I had four Mm -hmm. hours in the morning of calls back to back, four hours of calls in the evening back to back. Jamie saw my schedule and she's like, you let all of your clients pose with you when they're in the off season each week? I'm like, yeah, every week, every week, all of my girls that are in the season, they're posing with me. And it takes a lot of time, but I invest so much. And so you get what you pay for, you know? So like if you're getting, you know, I would say, like $150 is, is cheap and anything less than that's really cheap. Like you're yeah. probably going to be paying more for posing and more for this and more for that. So yeah. just be mindful of those things too. Free is not always the best. It's mm-hmm. it's probably not the best service. Like, nope. Or they're using you for one reason or another, you know, like I, I had that happen. I had a, a coach that, that coached me for free, but they used me for all of their advertising and to gain clients. And at the end of the day, Again, I go back to he actually wasn't a bad wasn't a bad coach in the in the gym, but he just didn't know what he was looking at when it came to bodybuilding. So, like at the end of the day, he was pretty good at what he did, except for the eye. So when mm-hmm. I sat back and looked at it, for me, free wasn't worth it. You right. know, free wasn't worth it because at the end of the day, I wasn't getting the results I wanted. Yeah. You know, you know, so, in my opinion, I would rather pay five hundred dollars for a coach per month, and they only yeah. have seventy athletes on their schedule, and then right. they're giving more time and attention. Right. Mm-hmm. Versus yep. why, why am I getting fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> you got fireworks. <laughs> no that was a new one. Every, every time we do a podcast, you've got some, some new some AI. AI. <laughs> I don't even know what you did. That was fantastic. <laughs> That's my computer saying, yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was great. <laughs> But anyway, anyway, that's my personal opinion. I'd rather pay more and get more attention. You know what I mean? Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Or get the right attention. You know, get, get the get, right attention. Get get to your goal, you know? Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay, so where, where did we leave off? We said interviews. Interviewing. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, definitely interview coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you're, when you're searching for a coach, you're really excited, right? You're like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to be having this new experience and this new relationship and da, da, da. And sometimes you get caught up in maybe one call or, you know, one communication with someone and you don't leave all of your options. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's like a job. I would go Mm -hmm. do two or three, even if you leave the first call and you're really, really hyped that, that coach is truly not going anywhere if they felt the same. Like, they're going to have you on their schedule at any time, whether it takes today, five days from now. So do your time. Have multiple interviews. Have your questions ready. Come with questions. Mm-hmm. I love athletes that are asking me more questions on the call than I'm asking them. Right. Because they want to really get to know me and make sure I'm the right fit as well. And I appreciate mm-hmm. that because yep. this coach-to-athlete relationship is huge. You have to trust the person really quick, get vulnerable very fast. And that consult call, that first call is everything. I would say it's a red flag too. If you're considering a coach that will not hop on a call with you, which I still hear all the time, which is crazy to me. Yep. These coaches are just taking people on and not even having a phone call with the person first. I mean, that's everything to me is that first. You're taking this, this person's health in their hands. You should be willing to get on a phone call with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think too, part of the interviews, which is what Sean was saying, like the, the, the coach should have success. They should have progress put pictures. Like you, yes. I tell people all the time, like I, I post my athletes and results and things like that often. But if somebody's questioning it, I say, go find my athletes. They post yeah, me all the time. Awesome. Every day mm-hmm. I post at least five to five to 10 athletes that tag me in the gym, go ask them their experience. They're going to be the first line of defense and telling you yep. how I operate, how I communicate, what they like, what they don't, whatever, go ask them. Um, 
it's very easy now to find athletes on under a coach's roster. And, and that to me, in my opinion, if I ever have to find a coach again, God, I hope not. That would be the first thing I do is talk yeah. to the other athletes. Absolutely. You know, that, that's a great way to start. Cause like we were talking at the beginning of this podcast, you know, marketing has changed a lot as far as trying to advertise your business, things like that. Still to this day, the best way to advertise your business is through your customers and through your clients. You know, they're, they're your biggest advocates. They really they are. They yeah. really are. Mm -hmm. They should be. Yeah. Yeah, they should be. Exactly. They should be. If they're not, if they're not, there's a problem there too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, you know, that I mean, that's the thing too. Like if you start getting with these, these um, athletes and their coaches and things like that, and they don't, they don't have good things to say, it doesn't matter what their track record is. You know what I mean? If they're not, if they're not a good person or whatever, whatever it might be, it doesn't matter how many wins they have, you know, wins, wins are one thing. Um, success after the stage and being, a functioning human being, <laughs> you know, those, those kinds of things are important too. You know, sometimes, yes. sometimes the, the ones that have the most titles have the most wrecked people behind them too. You know what I mean? So yeah, you just gotta, gotta be careful of that kind of thing sometimes too. Wins aren't, wins aren't everything. <laughs> and I don't know about you. Like I'm more impressed with a coach that could take someone from A to B. They yeah. take them as an amateur. Correct. They absolutely. Were, they were brand new and then turn them pro. Absolutely. That's a real result. And you know what? Mm -hmm. That might take that coach a lot longer to yep. you know, turn people pro and have that status under their belt, but they took them from the ground up versus yep. another coach getting someone that was already 75 to 80% there and then finishing the job and turning them pro. Yes. Not to say that that's not successful. Obviously, whatever you did, yeah. finish them that last 15%. But when I'm truly impressed by some something or someone is when they can literally take the athlete from point A to point B and everything in between. Yes. And that's why I do, like for my suit stuff, that's why I do the Pro Performer Promise because I love working with girls from the minute that they start taking them all the way through their NPC career and getting them into the, into the pro league. And then the Olympia too. I love that. They are my best. They are my best sponsored athletes by far because they've been with me since they started. And they know that when I give them advice that I'm telling them the right thing, Yulia is a perfect example. I use her all the time. I wish I had a thousand Yulias because <laughs> she just, she just She's takes such every a great piece athlete. of advice. Like I've worked with her since her first few shows, you know, not her very first, but you know, she was competing for like a year or two, something like that. And we literally, took her from there to her pro card to her pro win to the olympia like and she just executed on everything we told her to do it's like you know i wish i had more people that would trust me like that i'm like i promise that if you trust me with this stuff i'm gonna get you to where you want to be i'm like i'm not gonna tell you the wrong thing because then that does bad things for my business <laughs> of course like, it doesn't make sense i'm like why would right. i tell you the wrong thing you know what i mean when like, you're on stage in my suit yeah and you're doing my posing and my presentation and my like why would i tell you the wrong thing because then it comes back on me <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah i want you to succeed because then we all succeed again all ships rise together you know what i mean i want to see everybody do well you yeah. know it's, it's just crazy like I, I like i said i was like i wish i wish i had a thousand videos and i'd just be i'd just be happy as a clam <laughs> she's such a great athlete <laughs> right? same same uh, lord yes for sure um let's go to the next one red flags this would be red a good place to flags. finish finish the thought and bring the question is it the next slide there we go yep Oh yeah. Perfect. So this, Ooh. why, why we're talking about this topic today is because somebody sent in a question, right, Sean, about like, mm -hmm. Hey, I'm considering changing coaches. Like what are, what are some things of why I should change coaches yep. and things like that? So I think these are some, some really mm -hmm. great things. And to some people that are reading this right now, they're like, yeah, no, duh, it's obvious. But to some, it's not, it's not as right. obvious. And yep. they just assume that you know, especially first time competitors, they hire their first coach and they just assume that their experience is what is normal. Right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, so obviously the first thing is to me, your check in each week is huge. Like that is my one time at least that I get to connect with you, see how you're doing and see what's going on. And I tell my girls all the time, I look at your photos first and then I go into your data and your biofeedback, yes. but I want to look at how you're looking first so that I'm not distracted by what your weight is or how you felt that week or anything like that. I like to just look at you objectively, mm -hmm. but a coach should be asking for variables, right? So like some coaches, still only ask for photos and your weight. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. 
I think that we are in the day and age though, that we need to be asking for other things. Yes. How's your sleep? How's your digestion? How was your stress this week? Are you on your menstrual cycle? Yes. Is there anything that you want to talk to me about in terms of your training? How does your body feel? Mm -hmm. Because all of these things affect what I'm going to do for you that week right. Right, in that check-in. So I, I think that more data and more questions need to be asked. Um, I'll and, say like, it wasn't until it wasn't until I worked with Jamie that I had a coach ever ask me about my period. Not, not one of them ever did. That's you know, and it makes crazy such to me, uh, right? I know it's crazy as, to me I mean, as a female. Again, we know this. I mean, I've been through this about my Hawaii experience. I went up six pounds in a day, you know, that, that that's not normal activity, but it is when you've got your period and a coach should be asking those questions because that would make a difference in my check-in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just crazy to me. Yeah. How mm -hmm. about an athlete that's still cycling and they're getting ready for a show? I mean, you yeah. obviously but like if I know that my girl is still cycling and we're two weeks out, four weeks out from a show and she's she's still cycling, I might have to change her show date. If the right. show that we have aligned we know is in line with her period and she tends to hold four to six pounds of water. Mm -hmm. I need to know that so that I can help advise her to go pick a different show. That's right. Um, and then obviously menstrual cycle is just the universal sign of being healthy as a woman. <laughs> like yes. these are things we have to know. So again, that's, it's still wild to me, the lack of information that coaches ask for, but one, mm -hmm. which goes into blood work. That's I right. think blood work is a very simple tool that we can all do to look at what's going on underneath the tank. Whether you do it mm -hmm. once a year, every six months, my athletes know I'm a little bit more aggressive with lab work. I'm very open up and upfront with that on my calls because we could be doing everything correctly, diet, exercise to a T, but if something's going on underneath the tank, we're gonna miss it. Um, yep. So I just had an athlete that I interviewed uh, months ago. She ended up picking a different coach. Um, she just got some labs done with this coach and she's already been kind of on the fence um, about them. And her testosterone came back super low. Mm -hmm. She went to the coach and said like, hey, like we obviously need to work on this. And the coach was like, no, we don't. Everything's mm -hmm. fine. We just need to continue. And like severely low, severely yeah. low. So, you know, it's, and for, for maybe to some, like they just don't understand how to read the lab work or what that actually means or, you know, something like that. But lab work has to be, proficient in my opinion before any type of prep or growing phase happens because we need to make sure that health is always number one in my and opinion. I go back to this too I was never asked to do that until I got with with Jamie never yep. asked to do body work I do think it's become more of a requirement over the last couple of years like I don't yes. think it was really something people did a few years back you know what I mean um because part of that is also as a female they're just so far behind on on female health in general. So there's just a lot of hormonal things that doctors don't even know. Like you yeah. don't, when you go in and get blood work done, <clears throat> there's certain markers that you do for your general practitioner. The, this blood work is way more in depth than that. Way, yeah. way more in depth than that. And, he, and even the first time I did it, I had to explain to my husband why I need to do this because he didn't understand. He's like, but your, your normal blood markers are fine. Not, I was like, I know I, I get that, but we're trying to dive in deeper with this. You know what I mean? And make sure that I'm at an optimal level for everything. I was like, and as a female, I said, it's completely different than what you have to deal with. I'm like, I'm sorry, but it is, you know, it is. it's just, it's just our, our endocrine system is very, very different. So, you know, it's, and, and again, it goes back to, I just don't think it was, I just don't think it was common knowledge, even, even three, four years ago that you needed to do this kind of stuff, you know? And I will say too, like, I, I know up until a couple of years ago, and this is why I don't deal with doctors and insurance companies with lab work is that doctors don't pull everything we need. No, they don't. They don't. We go in and ask them for a full lab panel, a full sex hormone panel. And they're like, estrogen, progesterone. Okay. That's it. You're a woman. It's like, no, that's like reading a quarter of the story. And I, now yes. I don't have the, the, the ending, you know? Yep. Um, so I think it has to do too with insurance companies and doctors mm -hmm. and things like that. But now literally you can go online and pay yes. $200 and they send you a prescription to go to lab corp. You can go to any of these hormone clinics. There's, there's so many options available to you now. It's so easy to get what you need. It's a cash yeah. service, right? Yep. We know that, but at least we're getting everything. And yeah. I have, I have my clients bring their lab works to their doctors from premier and their doctors are like, Oh wow. Like, yeah, this, they this, have no idea. Impressive. And I'm like, 
you could do this too. Yes. Like you're the one who holds the script. No, the that. first time I went in for my blood work, like I, I tried to go through my insurance first. So I went through my, my general practitioner and all that kind of stuff. And the first thing that they said to me is that the only way they would take those blood panels for me is that this is literally what came out of the woman's mouth. She's like, maybe if you were like a guy coming in here complaining of, you know, erectile dysfunction or something, then we would, we would I was like, you have to be symptomatic. <laughs> I was like, really? Did yes. you really just say that to me? Yeah. Well, first of all, I don't have a penis, so I that's totally kind of impossible. <laughs> like, like, but I have to actually have a problem before you can yeah. test me for this stuff. Like, yeah, a lot I of it's terrible, but like some women, like they can't afford the cash service. So I'm like, okay, no. try to go to your doctor, but like you have to tell them something's wrong. Like, yeah. or else they're just they're not they're gonna say you're young, you're healthy, you're fine. Yep. You have to tell them something's wrong, or else yep. they're not gonna do it. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Unbelievable. Yeah. But anyway. So that's the thing about the lab work. But <laughs> and then most of these things we've already like yes, we've talked on, on, you know, mm -hmm. not listening, you know, like the, the athlete I just said, like clearly she was upset that her, you know, sex hormones are really low. This current coach was like, hey, it's fine. You know, she felt not heard. Like mm -hmm. she knew something's wrong. She wanted to address it. This coach was rushing her a little bit to stage. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's just listening to the athlete. And if, you know, as a coach, I'm t saying this as myself, like I listen and I hear them and I either say, Hey, I hear you. We're not doing that because, or, Hey, I hear you. This is the change that we're making. Yes. And always give that why either way, which goes to the next one. If the coach makes a change or if the coach has something on the plan, I tell I tell my girls all the time, everything that's on that plan, you could ask me why and I'm going to have a reason for it. Mm -hmm. And that goes through. Right. I say this to my staff at Push to all the time, the gym that I own in Tampa. You could tell me, like I'm reviewing one of their, um, you know, their athletes or, or clients that they're training and they have a specific training regimen or something that I necessarily don't agree with. And I ask them why. And as long as they tell me a, a good reason or a why behind it, I'll buy into it and I'll let them roll with it. Yep. But if you're just like, oh, I saw that on Instagram. I thought that was cool. Yeah. That's not a good enough reason. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. Don't, like, if you want to know the deeper edges of your plan, I think that you should ask. And that makes you a better athlete at the end of the day. That's right. And I never take, I hate when clients are like, I want to ask you this, but I don't want you to think that I'm challenging you. There's always, a, there's, it's, you're never challenging me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. unless you're saying it that way, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. Right. Correct. But if yes. you're curious and you're coming from a place of, I want to be educated. I love that. Yes. And that's, what's going to make you understand at the end of the day, more and more education. I also think that goes back again to the ego with coaches. They want to lack communication with their athlete because then they feel like if they give too much, that athlete can just leave. Yeah. And yeah. I don't feel that way. No, I, I feel like I, the more I, that you get to them, the more they're going to want Exactly. I believe in the power that I provide them and the education yep. that I provide them. So yep. I guess that's a personality thing, but I, I can see that, I guess, as a well, also, I, you know, I think it, it also comes back to people that um, I, I don't that, that haven't had to be creative with plans or anything like that, too. Like I know for myself, I've talked about this before. I always have I always have to be a little bit more creative with how I do exercises because of the way my body is put together. And I know that, you know, I know that I know that I have really long legs and things and I have to adjust things to fit me. So I understand that you as an athlete may have things going on in your body that you have to adjust in order to make it feel right for you. And I don't know what that is because I'm not inside your body. You know what I mean? So I want you communicating to me and saying, well, this is hitting me in my glutes, but this is hitting me in my quads, you know, and I don't want it to hit me in my quads. I want it to hit me in my glutes. Okay. Well, let's figure out why it's doing that. What? You know, yeah. you know, it's, it, let's, let's, you know, like we were talking before, record it so I can see it. So we know what we're doing, where we're, where our form is off. Maybe we need to do a completely different exercise to, in order to get the right results. You know what I mean? I'm totally open to that kind of thing because I know for myself, that's been a pain point. When, when coaches won't listen to me, when I'm telling them that that doesn't feel right, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I get it. I understand. And I want you to communicate with me so that we can make it better for you. You know, yeah. I want you to have, again, going back to like what I was saying with, with Yulia, like I want you to have the best results you could possibly have. So I want you to tell me so that we can make that happen. You know what I mean? But again, you're right. I think it's an ego thing. A lot of times coaches feel like they're like, no, it's either my way or the highway. And it's like, that's stupid. That's just, you're hurting everybody when you do that. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting your clients. You're hurting everything when you do that. Yeah. There's, 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 there's more than one way to skin a cat, you know? As long as the cat gets skin. You as know, long as the cat gets skin. Yes. There Absolutely. you go. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. 
I, it is. It's, it's, it's very difficult. You know, I, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I can, I could go into more of a tangent on that, but I'm going to. Oh. Yeah. Well, and we talked, so we talked about the, um, the nudes photos. We talked about that. So we're good. Or the rushing to the stage when health phases needed. We talked about that a little bit too, you know, making sure that you as an athlete are realized too, we understand that your goal is to get on stage, but we don't want you to die in the process you know what I mean? So we need you, we need to make sure that your body is ready for that. People don't sometimes underestimate what it takes to actually get to the stage. And so sometimes we got to take a quick step back and say, yeah, as much as you want to get on stage this summer, I think it'd be better off if we just get you healthy first and then maybe put you on stage in the fall. Maybe that's all we need. You know, maybe we just need a few months to get you healthy, you know, and then we can, we can push it a little bit harder, but you're already on two hours of cardio a day. You're already killing yourself with your, your macros as low as they can possibly go. We got nowhere to go from here. You know what I mean? We got, we got to make you healthy first, you know, and realizing as an athlete, when a coach tells you that, that they have your best interest at heart. A lot of times athletes, they just want it now, 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 now. It's like, well, yeah, but at what, what price, what expense, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we are in the eight day and age of instant gratification. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I was just, I was on the phone last night with, with a promoter. We were talking about a show and we were talking about pro cards and, you know, we're just, we're so in this day and age of like, I want a pro card now. And it's like, we mm -hmm. haven't even stepped on stage at a regional show yet. Like, yes, <laughs> we yeah. got to do steps. Right. And it's, it's, bodybuilding is not a sport. It's not a, it's not a fast sport. It's a, oh. it's really a sport of patience and diligence. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there are some girls that will turn pro at their first national show. That's not the majority. There are some right. girls that are still going after a pro card five to eight years later. That's and right. they're still working on it because they mm -hmm. love the process and they love the journey. And I tell people all the time on my consult calls, listen, if you want to get on stage in three months with, you know, 1400 calories and already doing 45 minutes of cardio a day. Great. It's just not going to be me, but you yeah. can go consult with another coach and they will take your money mm -hmm. and they will put you through a prep and yeah. you'll probably, that's usually where I stop it, but I'm thinking in the back of my head and then you're going to hate the sport. You're yeah. going to blame the sport because you're going right. to say that you were on three hours of cardio a day and sub 800 calories. And a coach that mm -hmm. thought about you already in your health, me, would have never put you in that position because at the right. end of the day, I want you to enjoy your experience. There That's is right. some level of suffering with any kind of contest prep. Hunger is inevitable. Feeling like shit's inevitable. All of it's inevitable. But if you could spend a little bit more time on the front end to make it suck less, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you? And yep. if you really want a pro card, think longevity. So many girls do these shotgun preps with a coach one time. They ruin their metabolism. They ruin their their hormones. They spend months or years after the show blaming the coach, blaming the mm -hmm. sport, all of this, when ultimately they just didn't listen to that health phase that was needed in the beginning. And I'm not okay. saying this is everybody. I'm just saying if you're just a brand new person to the sport and you get really excited and you get on that call with that first coach, most of the time you're going to need some time before you start prep. I would say nine times out of 10, a girl comes to me, she's brand new to the sport. She needs time to get That's prepared right. to prep. Most That's of the right. time, I, I think I've taken a girl once or twice that got on a call with me. He's like, I'm prepping tomorrow. I'm like, okay, let's go. And one of them made it to stage and one of them didn't. She didn't even yeah. make it like halfway through the prep. I don't like, I don't like that approach. So yeah. it's just health first. Yep. Health first. Always, always. Because yeah. if you don't do that, it's going to, it could affect you for years to come. Absolutely. You know, and then the last one you have there is the promising placings, bl uh, blaming politics, um, all of those kinds of things. That is my, I, I hate that excuse. I absolutely hate it. It is, and it gets perpetuated so much. I'm here to tell you, I have judged. I've sat on the judging panel. I have judged people that I've actually posed before. And I don't even know who they are when they step on the stage half the time. It takes me until they get through their individual to realize I'd actually worked with them because I'm not paying attention to who they are. I'm paying attention to how their body seeks. Mm -hmm. And I promise you that those judges sitting at that table are doing the same thing. And here's the other thing too. A lot of you guys don't look at all day to day, like you look on stage. <laughs> so a lot of times we don't recognize you anyway. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, I, I can't tell you how many times I've had a client like on stage. I'm like, Oh crap, that's my girl. I was like, I completely, like completely forgot because she looks 
totally different from day to day. So if you think that that judge saw you at like check-ins or something, and then they see you on stage, they're putting two two and two together. They are not, they're not doing that because it's just too much too fast. If you're ever questioning this kind of stuff, go sit and test judge a show and you'll realize real quickly that it goes by way too fast for the judges to even know who you are. They they see a number and they see a body and that's what they see. That's it. And let's say that there was one judge on that panel, which this never happens, but let's say there was. That was favoring you. His mm-hmm. score is getting thrown out anyway. That's right. the, the highest and the lowest score always gets thrown out. Yep. So if there's a judge that's co- that's scoring you completely different than the rest of the panel, it's getting thrown out anyway. Yep. So that's Absolutely. why that that rule is in place. Um, yep. And Sandy's very clear. Like off stage, S- Sandy knows the pros very well and knows their names and things like that. Half the time, Sandy can't even remember what team you're on, though. So no. really, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm I'm the type that's actually maybe a little bit over like communicative on where I think somebody's placing. Like I'm never like, hey, I think we're winning today. I'm always like, hey, maybe yeah. like you know, be realistic. We might not be in the top three today because I just want to. I'd rather underestimate and then we're correct. Like, you know what I yep. mean? Under promise, um, over deliver. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I took a girl through stage last year. She did a show as a warm up show. And I brought her in completely flat. I owned it. It was my fault. You know, I called her right away and I'm like, hey, I did, I missed the mark. I apologize, but I learned a lot. And now let's mm-hmm. go do the show three weeks later. And she came in perfect. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. I'm yep. a coach. I'm human. This was a, a first prep with this athlete, the first show with this athlete. I missed the mark. I learned. I explained to her what I learned and what I did wrong and how I was going to fix it, blah, 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 blah. She was completely happy. Cool. No problem. Thank you so much. And I fixed it. I yep. did fix it. So that's the thing is like, I, I think that there's merit in being humble and mm-hmm. owning this and it's okay to be human. And Absolutely. That. And I would rather my coach come to me and say that than, oh, well, you just didn't do good today because, you know, so, the so, so coach, coach was here or whatever. Yes. Yeah, I hear yes. it a lot. And that's, I hear once lot. again, coaches, if you're listening, like you are not helping no. the amateur athletes in our sport. You're making them question the sport. You're making them want to turn away from the sport by mm-hmm. doing things. Like yep. just own it. It's okay. It's all right. Yep. We're, we're, if you're in this long enough, you're going to mess up. Yep. <laughs> like you're, we're gonna mess up. A lot of times something else that I hear too, is that they'll say a specific coach or team, like they've got so many athletes in the show. That's why they win. It's like, no, a lot of times what happens is if you've got a local coach or something and they have a lot of athletes in the show, they're all winning because they have a lot of athletes in the show. They're the majority. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the majority. It's just numbers. Yeah. yeah, it's a numbers game at the end of the day. Like Absolutely. we say that with the, when we're talking about blonde hair versus brunette, when we're talking about, you know, bikini pros and stuff like that, right? There's a lot more brunettes that win than blondes, but that's because there's just a lot more brunettes than there are blondes. It has nothing to do with the fact that brunettes are better. There's just more of them. More. <laughs> That's it. There's just more, there's more of the, that coach's athletes in that particular show because the coach lives there, you know, right. like they're probably just, bound to win. Right. I mean, they you, bring 20 athletes. If you have 80%, yeah. Win. If you have 80% exactly. of the girls on that stage, they're probably going to do pretty well. You know, I'm just saying exactly. like, that's yeah. how it works. So the perception, the perception is it's politics, but in reality, they just have the majority of the clients. I love so it. Yep. that's yeah. it. You know, yeah. Anyway. Okay. Anything else you wanted to touch on with that? No, I think we hit it all. Unless Perfect. you have anything. No, I think, I think that was good. I think we got it. We got some good ones there. Now I know you've got a, you got calls to do and stuff like that too. Do you have more time or do we, do we want to end it? I have today? more time. She hasn't texted me yet. We're good. Perfect. Awesome. So let's go into, since we're wrapping up the topic, let's go into um, a couple of questions here. So the one that we're going to go into first is, this was sent to me. How long to run a program before a deload? If I don't schedule it for myself, I probably won't take one. So what are your thoughts on this, on this particular topic here? This question. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the answer. It's always so the what, answer. <laughs> so I guess, I guess my question back to her, like in this, this, there, there is a true answer is what's, what's the point of a deload, right? The point of a deload is is to recover is at least right. So most of the time with my athletes, I'm not setting in a structured deload, like Mm -hmm. train for four weeks and then deload. Mm -hmm. I'm paying attention to their biofeedback, right? I'm asking these questions in their check-in each week. How does your body feel? How's your training going? 
Are you sore, et cetera? And if I have a client that's like, you know what, Jordan, I didn't have any PRs this week. I feel like my legs are super heavy. I feel like my fatigue is super high. I have a lot of stress going on at work right now. Deload week. Hey, listen, let's go ahead and pull 20 to 25% off of your normal weight. Go in and do your same movements. Try not to do any kind of muscle damage and deload for the week. Mm -hmm. But everybody's different. Some people need to deload every four weeks. Some people can get get away with 12 to 16 weeks and not need It depends Mm -hmm. on you. How much are you training? Um, How intense is your training? And what else is going on? Is your sleep being affected, stress, et cetera? So really it's about listening to your body. If you re- if you're feeling like you're super sore, not really recovering, it's not really getting better, sleep's affected, stress is high, deload it. Yep. Now that's your body talking to you. That's right. And I agree with everything that you just said right there. I would say the exact same thing. Um, also to add on to that too, sometimes they, the deload weeks just kind of come naturally too. Meaning like you have an event coming up where you're going to be gone for three, four days or something. So you can't train as hard as you typically do. Great point. Use, use that, you know, use that as my, okay, this is my recovery time. This is when yes. I'm going to do this. Right. Yeah. So that's always a way to do it too. That's kind of my, kind of how I do it. I'll be honest yeah. with you because I know life gets in the way sometimes. So when I have the ability to train hard, I'm going to train hard, but I know there's going to be a time in the next six weeks or so where I'm going to have to take it down a notch for a couple of days. Great example, I'm going to the Arnold this weekend, so I'm structuring my training different so that I can actually be at the Arnold and be present there. And it's going to be kind of like a little deload, so I'm going to have a couple of days of rest, you know, just is what it is. So those those are the things that you can use to, you know, push yourself forward and structure that as well. Structure it, yes. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always have to be physical, too. Sometimes you need a mental deload. Like, there's just some weeks, today I showed up to the gym, I did not want to be there. Thank God I trained with my training partner today, but... I did not want to be there. I didn't want to push. I didn't want to lift anything heavy. I didn't want to get uncomfortable. If this progresses for days, I may need a deload. I may need to go in. And deload can be pulling off weight in that case, or it could also be just going into the gym each day and just doing what you feel like doing for that. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes going in and doing something is better than not doing anything at all. And I tell people all the time, being a great athlete is is also learning when to push and when to pull back. And that's that mental component too with deload. Yep. Absolutely. agree with all of that too. So, you know, I don't think you necessarily have to schedule it. I think you'll kind of feel it at the end of the day. That's it. So I agree. Yeah. Cool. All right. So let's do one more question. This was, this, this one came in and um, touched on this a little bit. We've seen some, some hubbub about this and this has been a kind of hot topic, you know, thoughts on a former Miss Bikini Olympia champ talking negatively on the sport. Now, what she's been doing is just kind of talking about the restrictive dieting, the crap that she had to do when she was on stage and all those kinds of stuff, that kind of thing. It's been pretty polarizing. Um, <clears throat> I know you have mentioned that you haven't really seen it. Um, so kind of give me your thoughts as far as just from an outsider looking in. If you saw somebody that had won the biggest title in the world now poo-pooing the whole thing. What would be your first thought process in that? Well, immediate thoughts is I'm just putting myself in their shoes, right? So if I'm a, mm-hmm. if I'm a bikini athlete and I win the Olympia one day and 10 years down the line, I start to have some feelings about it. To, to me, where, where I think about this, like I said, these are just fresh thoughts. I have not seen this or anything is, is at one point it was a choice that was made that, mm-hmm. you know, we go back to right. that earlier. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, we choose what we do to our bodies right now and what we put into our bodies. And that is your choice and that's your prerogative. And at the time it was what you did. Um, Mm -hmm. There's no way around this sport. When you're six weeks out from a competition and you're, you are in a competition prep, this sport is not healthy by any means. Mm -hmm. It goes back to what I just said earlier. That's why taking a few, a few months when you find this sport to get as healthy as you can be knowing that at Mm -hmm. some point in prep, it is going to be detrimental in 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 some way, blood work, the diet, for people who have eating disorders, it can make the eating disorders worse, but it can also make it better, right? So mm-hmm. it's a choice at the end of the day. And yep. there, it is an extreme sport and it's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. That's why only 10% of the population does this. I tell people all the time, like mm-hmm. people don't just get jacked and lean on accident. It's it's really right. hard. Right, the choice. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a choice. It's <laughs> difficult, right? Yeah. Um, uh-huh. So she just didn't do this for years by accident. So mm-hmm. I don't know. 
-hmm. you know, it might be some mental things or what, whatever the feelings are. She clearly has the rights to her opinion and and how she feels about things. But I do think at the end of the day, like anybody that's currently in the sport and doing it, we know that we choose this day after day. We know what it takes. And in 10 years down from the line, if maybe you don't agree with that anymore, or you see some disordered eating or things that came from that, I think then you have to take responsibility for that and work Mm -hmm. on things. Hey, I made this choice 10 years ago. This is now where I'm at because of that choice. Now I need to work on fixing it. Yep, absolutely. And I agree with you. And, you know, coming up in the sport like I did, I came up during her time frame. And I know what she's talking about. And she's not wrong. She's not wrong in some of the things that she did. That was a lot of the choices that were going on back then. Um, a lot of things that she did, I personally didn't do. But I saw a lot of my friends doing those things. Um, and it was very restrictive. And it was very, you know, it was, it was not mentally a very good place for a lot of these women to be in, you know? So I, I saw all of that happen, but I also realized there has to be a better way of doing this. Right. So again, I go back to, there's a reason why I came back and I started working with Fit Body Fusion. And there's a reason why I went down this road because I knew that couldn't be, that couldn't be it. That couldn't be, that couldn't be, that, that can't be it. You know, there's gotta be a better way of doing this. I see people doing this healthy, I see people doing this where they feel really balanced. They feel good about everything and they feel good about all their choices that they're making during the day. So it can't be all about this restrictive dieting and really hardcore, like eating disorder type stuff. It can't be all that. So I went out and found this, the, the solution to the problem. Right. So again, those choices were made 10, 12, 15 years ago, but then the choices were made to be better as well. Right. Versus me sitting here and saying, this is a crap sport. This is a crap. It creates this blah, 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 blah. No, you chose for it to create those things. You could have chosen for it to create better habits too. Yeah. Which is what I did, you know, and I go back to that. I'm like, if there's a problem with it, you need to find a solution for it. There are solutions to every problem. Yeah. You're going to have to, you're going to have hard times. It's going to be difficult. You're going to have to figure things out. You're going to have to mentally rewire yourself. I say this to people every day. You have to think differently. You know, I grew up in the era of restrictive dieting was just what you did. You know what I mean? Just regardless. Marilyn Monroe Bodybuilding. Yeah. Yeah. Like whether you're in bodybuilding or not, you know, you, you, you eat popcorn and salad and you, you're supposed to look like this. That's it. Yep. Yeah. If you, if you, if you weigh more than 120 pounds, you're fat, you know, it's just, that's, that's, that is what I grew up in, you know? So I get it. I understand that. But again, we've come so far. This goes back to what we were talking about before. If there's, if there's a something there, there's a way to do it better, plagiarizing and improving. You know, we take those principles from early, early days of bodybuilding and we plagiarize and we improve it, Yeah, you know? And again, going back to being around people who want to constantly be better, who want to constantly learn more, who want to constantly reinvent the game, you know, that's where you, you, you can make this so much better versus just sitting where you were 10 years ago and staying there in that spot, mentally, physically, that spot. I see so many old school bodybuilders just bitch nonstop. And I'm like, dude, it's different now. If you just open your eyes, that's a really just great open point. Your eyes. That's a really great point. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be like that. Yeah. Just because you did it that way back in the seventies and eighties, it doesn't need to be like that. Now we're, we're 50 years in the future. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the like things have progressed, yeah. you know what I mean? That's, that's a great point so, because to be fair, I mean, and you can speak on that too. 10 years ago, it was like, Hey, seven asparagus spears, chicken, yeah. cod only, mm-hmm. no seasoning, yep. it, water cutting, like was, was the thing, diuretics mm-hmm. was the thing. And all of those things now are not the case, right? Macros are a beautiful tool. This is the whole reason why Jamie created Fit Body Fusion because she was with a coach in a very similar style like you, seven asparagus. And she said, it can't be this way. There's got to be a better solution. And that's when she found macros. And now we have this beautiful tool that we can all use that again, hundred ways to skin a cat, just as long as a cat gets skin. So that's a great point. Right. She's probably still in the era of 10 years ago. Not all the advances mm-hmm. that we've had over the last few years, water cutting these days in the women's division is not re- I wouldn't say all women's divisions, the bikini division is not really a thing for most people. Nope. 
keeping water fairly consistent. Diuretic mm -hmm. should not be getting used as frequently as it used to. It's not like the, hey. I mean, you saw what diuretics did to me in Hawaii and they did not help me. Exactly. <laughs> Like we tried, but yeah. it did nothing yeah. other than make me look like a bowl, like a freaking water balloon. Every it's time that, that I've used diuretics, it's been very few and far and in between. I, we've hated the luck. And it was, yeah, and it was same. before Jamie, it was with my old coach, but we, it was not the luck. Like no. it's just, it's an, it's an old thought. It's an old school title thinking. So, and that could be the thing, you know, she's yeah. just still in that, in that same old school bodybuilding.com mentality thinking and doesn't understand now this world that we're all in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's always some level of suffering, but there's a lot of great nuances now that, that they've come yeah. around yes. to. There's just so much more continued education now. It's crazy. Like even, you know, and I know a lot of this just from, from being around the sport for so long, but also just going in and doing certifications through NASM and things like that. They, so easy. They've adapted. They've adapted so many things to make this so much better. And we always talk about balance. Now, it's, it's hard to have balance in, in an extreme sport. This is an extreme sport. We talk about that all the time. But it's a hell of a lot more balanced now than it ever was 10 years ago. You it know, is. you you can do this and be healthy doing this. And yeah, you're going to suffer. We've talked about this. You're going to suffer towards the end. There's no, just no way around that. But you don't have to suffer for 24 seven. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, that's the bottom line. And again, you go back to, that's what the thought process was 10, 15 years ago. You have to be open to educating yourself to be better, right? At the yep. end of the day, you got to be open to educating yourself to be better. We, we, we put the, this this free information out every week. It's <laughs> yep. there. It's yep. there. Educate it's yourself. It's only getting better and better in my opinion. <laughs> no, we're only getting better. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> from episode one to 27 i know right well and a lot of that has to do with the fact that we've got you know people writing in and asking questions and we have things that we can talk about we want again going back to what we talked about this whole time we want you to communicate with us so that we can we can help you and we can educate you and it helps us too you know yeah i love doing talks like this too because for me it just it stimulates right here and it gets me thinking about sure. new things yeah mm -hmm. it keep, keeps me thinking about new things like even just preparing for the podcast themselves you know i sit there and do my research to put everything together for you guys like i like doing that stuff you know yep. I'm yep. a, i like being a problem solver and again going back to at the end of the day you can either be stuck where you are or you can try to solve that problem right yeah so yep. I think at the end of the day, I think she's probably just stuck where she is instead of trying to go out there and make it better. Yeah. There's always yep. a way to make it better. There's always a way to make it better. Always. Yep. So. Yep. Anyway. <laughs> so those were our questions for today. <laughs> awesome. Those were good ones. Yeah, those were good. Those were good. Questions. Keep sending yeah. them in, please. Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we build a lot of our topics based on what you guys communicate with us. You know what I mean? That we, again, going back to this topic today about coaching and all that kind of stuff came from you guys communicating to us. So, you know, when, when we hear things from our, from our clients and from our friends and from you guys out there listening and things like that, that's what spawns this kind of stuff for us. So we really appreciate all of the, all the feedback and everything too. So with that, we'll wrap it up. So I, I think you probably have your call now, but that we're we're good. I got a new console. Yay! <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, and that will do it for episode twenty-seven. We'll get this out this evening. Um, I'll be on the road to Columbus tomorrow, so I'll be keeping safe you guys travels. In. Thank you. Yeah, hopefully no snow. Cross your fingers. Um, <laughs> do some good so commentary far. for us. Absolutely. I'll get lots of content, lots of commentary. I will be back with lots of things to talk about, I'm sure, when it comes to the results and stuff like that, too. So um, we'll have some fun with that, and then we'll get back on and do another another uh, podcast next week. Um, and with that, subscribe, like, comment, all the things. And for episode 27, we're out. We're out. Fireworks. <laughs> now, fireworks. this time. All the fireworks. No more fireworks.